Dr. Montek Singh Aluvel, your Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission is joining us uh, right now. Sir, thanks very much for your time. Great to have you with us here. Sir, hopes are getting higher and higher about what more can happen uh, from New Delhi, what more can be announced from New Delhi. I just want to start with that very broad question to you. Uh, a lot has happened and a lot more is expected. Uh, we've been reporting on that, everybody else has been uh, carrying, but uh, what, what is on the government's mind, sir? What next? What are the big, uh, next big things? What is the roadmap? Well, you know, there's a lot of things on the table or on the pipeline at any given time. I mean, we're just going later today to the cabinet uh, seeking approval of the 12th five-year plan. And that document lays out a very vast agenda, uh, which has to be put into play somewhere over the next three or four years. I would say the most immediate priority, and I think the Prime Minister and others have also uh, mentioned this, the most immediate priority is to show that the economy is in a turnaround mode. I mean, in the previous year, 2011-2012, uh, growth rate decelerated quarter by quarter, ending up with 5.3%. Now, in the first quarter of the current year, it was 55 That's a little bit higher, but I don't really call that uh, a robust turnaround. So I think what we need is, first of all, to be able to show that the economy has now bottomed out and is getting out of this problem. I think in the second half of the current year, there's a good chance that we'll be able to show that. And the most important thing to achieve that objective is to really stimulate investment in the infrastructure sectors. And for that, we need to overcome many implementation bottlenecks that we've been addressing. Uh, we've known about them, we're addressing them, and I think that in the next month or two, we will see a lot of action on issues of uh, fuel supply to power stations, which is probably the most immediate thing. We've already put in place, Cabinet approved last week, a proposal for restructuring the debt of the state discoms, which is quite essential to make them financially viable. And the Prime Minister has set up a review sometime in October when he will be looking at the performance of each of the infrastructure sectors during the first half of the year. And we are conducting that review over this month. Perhaps towards the end of the month, we'll be able to go back to the PM. That will give an indication of where is it that the system is a little bit off track. So I think with all these uh, initiatives, the turnaround should really happen. Of course, you know, there are other things in the agenda which are very important for the long-term uh, growth of the economy. Uh, probably the most important single thing is really uh, getting movement on the goods and services tax. Now, you know, that involves a constitutional amendment. It's not something that can be done very quickly. It does require a political consensus. But, you know, I'm hopeful that uh, views are narrowing. I'm not aware of anyone saying we shouldn't have a GST. So I think we need a little bit of patience. And particularly investors, once they see that there is a consensus that is getting worked out, I think it will have an impact on investment. Also, I think the Finance Ministry has uh, set up two very important committees, the Shom Committee and the Rangachari Committee, you know, addressing concerns that investors had in the very short run. Uh, I think if those reports, what I've seen of them, I mean, if they are A, accepted and implemented, which I'm hopeful they will be, that is really the finance minister's call, I think that will be a lot of action in a relatively short space of time. And that is why I do believe that the mood has changed. So I but, but, but I should say that, you know, we need to get on with doing more. I'm not saying we've done everything. Yes. yes. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, since you brought up the uh, point of show panel and what you've seen of it uh, would uh, help things along quite a bit, uh, I think yesterday there was a report uh, in one of the newspapers, financial news, I think it was a financial express, which said that Vodafone may be actually allowed uh, to get away without paying any tax. The tax would be essentially imposed on the seller, not on the buyer. I mean, that's essentially what the Shom Committee panel is recommending uh, on the retrospective tax bid. Can you confirm that, sir? Uh, and of course, there's a GAR issue as well, no, but I, on the I, retrospective I, bid. I don't think uh, I... I don't, I don't think anyone can confirm anything on an individual company. So I think that's really no on the policy on call, the policy front, sir. Function. On the policy front, is the, is well, the I, I I mean the second report has only just been submitted 
I've not actually read it. So I would, I think this is essentially taxation matters are finance ministry matters. So I could only confirm it if I knew that the finance ministry has decided. I'm not aware that they have taken any decision on this matter. But you know, this is something that will take a little bit of time. But you know what has been proposed, sir? No, I've not read the report, so I've only, I've only read, uh, okay. read what newspapers. I mean, okay. the, second, the, the second version, I've not read. Okay, got that, sir. Uh, you know, I will uh, come to fuel supply because that's the most critical uh, issue which the industry uh, also tells us needs to be fixed and you're doing quite a bit. But before that, you said that the starting second half of this fiscal, the economy will start to turn. What, could you just sort of put that in perspective? What exactly do you mean? Because a lot of what has been done right now has a big signaling impact. But uh, many believe that the macros will continue to uh, sort of, you know, suffer and they will take their time before, uh, you know, they, they turn. There's the cyclical aspect of it and many argue that the government can only do so much to help that uh, process along. Uh, what's your sense, sir? No, I think there's no doubt that the macro is very important, but uh, I didn't mention it. But one of the most important things that the government has done in the last couple of weeks or so was the decision to raise uh, petrol, I mean, diesel prices and also to cap the subsidy on LPG. So that's a very significant fiscal step. Uh, it isn't that important what its total amount is compared to what people think might be the deficit. There's news today that the finance ministry is considering ways of containing expenditure, which is also a good sign. I think all the signals are that the finance ministry is committed is taking on uh, a commitment on fiscal consolidation. Now, the Kelka Committee has outlined what, to my mind, is a very reasonable roadmap. Uh, in the 12th plan, we had ourselves said that you can't expect the earlier roadmap uh, to be met, given that in 2011-12, there was quite a big deterioration. But we should now set, put in place a credible roadmap. And the most important single thing, in, in that roadmap, other than tax reform, uh, it, and, and not just tax reform, but also tax administration, on which, you know, Kelka has made a number of suggestions. They have nothing to do with legislation, so they could be done quite easily. The most important other thing is containing subsidies, and I think the government has actually taken steps. Now, you know, we've been saying we need to contain subsidies for a long time, but here you have a concrete action being taken. So I feel that uh, people looking at the fiscal situation today would naturally compare the fiscal situation with what it is in other countries. Now, you know, India's fiscal deficit is actually lower than the fiscal deficit in the United States and in the UK. And India's debt to GDP ratio is also lower than the debt to GDP ratio in both these countries. And their growth rates at maximum are going to be about 2%. India's growth rate, at minimum, people say, will be six and a half, although we personally feel that it will be significantly higher. So frankly, India's debt dynamics in the present situation are actually better than the debt dynamics of many of the industrialized countries. Now, anyone looking at that uh, and looking at what's happened in the last three months would have to say that things are on the mend. Nobody, by the way, expects a fiscal problem to be resolved in a very short period. I mean, what people are looking for is, is the government committing itself to a credible, medium-term trajectory? And I think that the government <clears throat> is on that path. And you'll see that, you know, uh, as fears of government not following the path through, uh, expectations about what can happen on the revenue side, willingness to hold expenditure if it becomes necessary. I mean, these are the essential requirements of fiscal a macroeconomic balance. And I think you'll see that. So I don't fear the, the macro side. Now, clearly, uh, personally, I feel that it's, it's addressing the implementation bottlenecks in, in infrastructure yes. uh, and maybe uh, providing liquidity to infrastructure, more finance. And we've, we will be seeing action in that area. We, we had a major initiative, which is the infrastructure debt funds. It's a new instrument to put in more money. Uh, I think the last stages of that will hopefully be approved by the cabinet uh, later today. The finance ministry has brought a proposal for a tripartite arrangement that will actually enable um, security of this lending uh, to come up to a minimum level. I think lots of action is, is uh, slowly unwinding. So I think that points to the situation 
slowly improving. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.